Forgetting all about hell and paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling the best with the cheapest price So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about hell and paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling the best with the cheapest price السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم all praises due to Allah we all praise him and we seek his help whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one and whomsoever Allah leaves astray none can show him guidance I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah alone and I bear witness that Muhammad peace be upon him is his last messenger. Our dear viewers of Huda TV, welcome to another live edition of our program Gardens of the Pious and today's episode is number 496 in the series <coughs> of Riyadh al-Salihin by Imam Nawawi. May Allah have mercy on him. Today, inshallah, we resume with chapter number 234, the obligation of observing jihad. And the hadith that we'll begin this episode with, uh, it was the last hadith that we covered in the last episode, but we did not get to cover it fully. We just tackled it. So hadith number 1291, narrated by Salman al-Farisi, may Allah be pleased with him, قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول رباط يوم وليلة خير من صيام شهر وقيامه وإما تجرى عليه عمله الذي كان يعمل وأجري عليه رزقه وأمن الفتان سلمان may Allah be pleased with him said I have heard the messenger of Allah peace be upon him as saying observing رباط in the way of Allah and for his sake for a day and a night is far better than observing fasting for a whole month and standing in the prayer in tahajjud for all its nights and if a person dies while in the duty of ribat then he will go on receiving his reward for his uh, meritorious deeds perpetually and he will be saved from Al-Fattan. This hadith, which is a sound hadith, brings to our attention the importance of observing ribat, and that there is no other good deed that can really uh, compensate or match the reward for observing ribat or jihad for the sake of Allah, provided for the sake of Allah. Fi sabilillah. We said the word ribat is taken from ribat, which is rabata, to tie. And a ribat is to feel and to be tied up somewhere. Yani to hang around, to encamp in the military post. And the purpose of encamping in that military post is to protect the frontier of the Muslims, whether on the borders which fall between us and the enemies, like during the time of war. So it's not necessarily in our countries. Like we have our army camping somewhere, and uh, they do not stay up and vigilant 24-7. So they take turns. So some guards, some officers and soldiers will be doing ribat in camping. They stay awake, guarding the army, and they remain vigilant. This ribat occupying this post and encamping in this military post, fi sabilillah, even if it happened only for a short period of time, which is a day and night. Normally, when somebody joins the military, they travel abroad and they take the training and it is very extensive. And the training before the first vacation can last for six months. So what the Prophet is saying that, even if your ribat was as short as one day and one night, but not less than that. So this one single day and night, a ribat, you're encamping, 
and you occupy this military post in order to protect your fellow Muslims, in order to guard them. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that is before Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, as far as reward, has a greater reward than fasting for a whole month and praying tahajjud for all the nights of that month. So Siyam and Qiyam collectively, not each one separately. It's not like, you know, this ribat is better than fasting alone or this ribat is better than uh, observing tahajjud for a whole month alone. No. So if you happen to fast for a whole month, and during its nights you stand up in prayer for the whole night, of course this is such a, a meritorious deed, and it would have a huge reward. We spoke in the past about the virtues for fasting. Each single day it takes you away from hellfire, the distance of 70 years. And also the virtues for praying at night. تتجافى جنوبهم عن المضاجع يدعون ربهم خوفا وطمعا ومما رزقناهم من فقون فلا تعلم نفس ما أخفي لهم من قرة أعين جزاء بما كانوا يعملون for observing the night prayer and tahajjud of the the Almighty Allah says no soul knows what Allah has prepared for them of comfort for their eyes in the hereafter on the day of judgment in paradise, such a huge reward. Yet all of that compared to observing jihad and particularly ribat, which is you're not actually fighting it, you're just guarding the borders. You are encamping in this military post, you're taking orders, you stay here, you remain vigilant. In one hadith, the Prophet said, Aynani la tamassahum an nar. There are two eyes. And here the eyes refer to the person who have those eyes who observes the following practice. There are two eyes. Fire of hell will never touch them, will never come close to them. Okay? So it is talking about a part of the body, but it refers to the entire body, obviously. Why? Because this body part is being utilized most in this activity. So there are two people who will never enter hellfire and fire will never even touch their skin. The first one or the first ayn or eye, aynun bakat min khashiyatillah. A person whose eyes shed tears out of fear of Allah. And the second, aynun batat tahrusu fi sabilillah. The eyes of a person who spent the night awake and vigilant even though he was not praying tahajjud, but he was guarding the Muslims, the frontiers of the Muslims, for the sake of Allah. Even if that was observed for a short period of time. In the hadith, ribatu yawmin wa layla. Let me add to you that Ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy on him, said that uh, the observance of ribat anywhere in the world is better than praying tahajjud in Mecca or Medina or observing i'tikaf or residing in both cities. Look at the comparison. In Mecca, you're just staying there. If you do nothing other than praying with the Imam, with the Jama'ah, the five daily prayers alone, each prayer in Mecca is better than a hundred thousand prayer anywhere else. But observing one single night in ribat fi sabilillah is superior to that. Al Masjid al Nabawi in Medina, each prayer in the prophetic masjid is better as far as reward than a thousand prayer anywhere else. But observing jihad one single night, a day and night, is superior to that. Allahu Akbar is superior to observing i'tikaf for a whole month in the masjid of Prophet Muhammad or in Mecca. When Abu Huraira, radiyallahu an, they were in Asham, and particularly in a city called Yafa, on the shore in Palestine. So when he was observing ribat on that night, he said to his companion, I swear to God this night of 
Ribat that I'm observing here in that military post guarding the frontier of the Muslim army is dearer to me than staying up for the whole night in Tahajjud in Al Masjid Al Aqsa, which is nearby. But this is better for me than observing Tahajjud in Al Masjid Al Aqsa or in Al Masjid Al Haram or in Al Masjid Al Nabawi. So, this is the greatest act provided it is done exclusively and sincerely as the Prophet Sallallahu said. What if while he was guarding that military post, he got shot, he was assassinated, he got killed. وَإِنْ مَاتَ جَرَى عَلَيْهِ عَمَلُهُ الَّذِي كَانَ يَعْمَلُ We understand that the Prophet Sallallahu said in another hadith collected by Imam Muslim رضي الله عنه إذا مات العبد انقطع عمله إلا من ثلاث. Whenever the servant of Allah dies, all his good deeds will come to end. Then he said, except from three ways. So if you want to maintain the continuity of the meritorious deeds that you used to do before your death and continue the reward for that after your death um, is by spreading useful knowledge. Uh, raising a righteous child so that when they grow up they continue to pray for you or give in a charity uh, which will be continuous to benefit people after your death so in return you will be benefited with the reward. Magnificent. But the act which if you die due to your meritorious deeds will be continuous even though you're not doing any more any of them is dying fi sabilillah, dying on the battlefield, dying while in a state of ribat. Why? Because you chose to defend the Muslim Ummah so that they can pray, they can fast, they can observe their ibadat, they can live in peaceful environment. Today I was reading about the suffering of the Uyghur Muslims and the persecution that they are going through. Uh, so men are being uh, arrested in concentration camps and their wives are being forced to sleep on the same bed next to people who are observing them. This is crazy. But you know why this is happening? And why this can happen not only in China far away from us, it can happen even in Mecca and Medina, it can happen in Cairo, Egypt, it can happen in Damascus, in Asham. It only happens when Muslims in general collectively neglect this duty because the messenger of Allah peace be upon him said that any people who neglect the duty of jihad illa darabahumullahu bizzulla Allah will cast humiliation upon them they will be disgraced and humiliated in the case of Bosnia, Kosovo the international community was watching only when people started flowing from here and there in order to support the weak and oppressed Muslims and their women who are being raped day and night, the international community decided to intervene. Why? Because Muslims, individuals, not the Muslim governments, not a Muslim state, they decided to support and help those who are being oppressed under the banner of observing jihad for the sake of Allah. They were not invading others and their countries or their societies. They were not planning to establish an Islamic state in Ukraine or in Serbia or in Europe somewhere just to help and to defend the weak and the oppressed. Guaranteed the international community has to intervene. So what happens is that when the Muslim Ummah is negligent of its duty in this regard, humiliation will be cast upon them, not only individuals, the Ummah at large, the rulers and those who are being ruled. So you find the leaders of the non-Muslim societies are humiliating in their addresses, humiliating the Muslim rulers, and the Muslim rulers act as if they're deaf. They cannot hear, blind, they cannot see. Why? Because we chose to be in this situation. 
we chose to be in this situation. Just a hundred years ago, the case was not like that. It was one single united ummah. Okay, so ever happens in Asham, echoes in Cairo, uh, echoes in uh, all over the Muslim ummah. So the Prophet وسلم, said, this person who dies while he is guarding the Muslim borders, or if the army is set out somewhere and he's guarding the frontier of the Muslim army. So he got shot, he got killed. Whatever he used to do in the past, like he used to fast on Mondays and Thursdays, ordinary people, when they die, they're not fasting anymore. So that's it, the reward for fasting is seized. But this person who died as a shaheed, his reward is continuous until the day of judgment. Unlimited, perpetual. Every Monday and every Thursday, this is what you used to fast. You're still getting the reward, but he's dead. He's in the grave. So he died for the sake of the ummah to live, to practice its deed. So the Almighty Allah, the most generous, is continuing his reward despite the fact that he's not around anymore. But he is not around only on earth. But his soul, as it's stated in the Quran and in the sound hadith, is in paradise. The Messenger of Allah said, Inna arwah al shuhadai fi hawasili tuyurin khudrin tasrahu fil jannah. So the souls of those who die for the sake of Allah, the martyrs, will be in the stomach of green birds in paradise. And by the way, I'm not saying something that is exclusively for Muslims they believe in. No. All countries have the right to defend themselves. This is an amendment of the United Nations. All people, all countries have the right to defend themselves. Muslims too have the right to defend themselves as an ummah. What else? Different countries who do not necessarily share the same religion or even language, they make allies to defend each other in case that another country attack any of those countries. Muslims are more worthy to be united than anybody else and they have the right to defend all Muslims and fellow Muslims all over the world. During the Crusades, the Pope was promising that those who kill Muslims will enter paradise. That is recorded. So when you go, they call it a holy war to fight against Muslims, whether the first or the second crusades, right? We only fight against those who fight against us. And we only, the idea of jihad was prescribed in order to protect the concept of da'wah. But jihad was not prescribed to force anyone to become Muslim whatsoever. Not a single reference, not a single reference says that God commanded Muslims to fight against people so that they choose to become Muslims. Rather, there are many reasons for fighting which are still valid until today with other nations only, not only with Muslims. Not from among them that you fight people in order to convert them to Islam. That is not true. Islam or belief is a concept of, con of conviction. If you're convinced because when you say the shahada, you will follow it with the practice. You know, you will follow it with fasting, with the prayers, with giving zakah, with praying at night. This is your choice. You chose to become Muslim and to fulfill such acts of worship. So if you're not being supervised 24-7, how would you do that? Non-Muslims are living in Muslim societies they are not being prevented from practicing their religious duties or going to their churches or eating their food even though it's haram for us. Not in history, not once it says or it shows that when Muslims were in control, they prevented the followers of other faith from going to their places of worship. But this is what is happening all over the world with Muslims, their places of worship are being demolished and targeted by rockets, by planes, by grenades, the minarets, the domes, the places of worship, the schools, the hospitals, whether by non-Muslim or by other Muslims, which is very unfortunate. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he says, this person 
who maintained his post and his position uh, on the borders in order to protect Muslims if he paid his life for the sake of that his reward is perpetual and continuous even though he's dead وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتًا بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ Don't you think that those who died for the sake of Allah are dead? Nay, in reality they are ahya, plural of hay, they are living. Living where? Their bodies are on earth, but their souls are with the Lord in paradise being provided. There are many ayat that confirm this concept, but I want to wrap up the hadith. Furthermore, so we say the, the, the reward for the ribat of one day and one night is better than uh, fasting for a whole month, praying the tahajjud for a whole month. Then if the person dies in this condition, his reward for whatever deeds he used to do, like this guy used to pray five times a day, obviously. So when he died today, until the day of judgment, perhaps there is another couple thousand years or 5,000 years or 10,000 years, Allah knows best. Throughout this time, the angels are still recording his good deeds even though he is officially dead. وَأُجْرِيَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقُهُ وَآمِنَ الْفَتَّانِ وَأُجْرِيَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقُهُ He will be provided as if he's still alive. And وَآمِنَ مِنَ الْفَتَّانِ And he will be saved from الْفَتَّانِ What is الْفَتَّانِ? Al-Fattan here refers to the questioning in the grave or Fitnatul Qabr, the trial of the grave. Whenever any person dies, the two angels will come and set him up, Munkar and Nakir, and will question him, who is your Lord, what is your religion, what do you say concerning the man whom God has sent unto you? Okay, we all know the questions. And those questions and during this time, even the companions of the Messenger of Allah, when one of them died and the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, buried him, people were fixing to leave after they closed the grave and it's over. He said, hang on, don't go anywhere. Istaghfiru li akhikum wa salu allaha lahu tathbita fa innahu al-ana yus'al. He is such in a big test. Okay? So hang on and keep making dua, ask Allah, to make it easy, to make it light for your brother who just died and ask Allah to keep him firm so that he will answer the questions properly with ease. The questions of who's your Lord, who, uh, what is your religion, what do you say concerning the man who has been sent unto you? That's fitna, it's called fitna to al-qabr. And the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, on every single prayer before he would finish, he would seek refuge with Allah again is the trial of the, uh, the dunya and the akhirah, the trial of the grave, fitna al qabr. Now, I remember, as you do remember once when we spoke about the hadiyah, in all those uh, episodes, one of the companions of the Prophet saw so a woman give him a burda or a clock as a gift. He liked it. He put it on. It looks so beautiful on him. And the person who was sitting, he said, Ya Rasulullah, a'tiniha, O Prophet of Allah, would you please give it to me? Imagine. So he was just giving a gift, a nice clock, a nice outer garment. He put it on and it looks beautiful on him, handmade and very nice. And this guy said, would you please give it to me? So the Prophet Sallallahu folded it nicely and said, it's yours. The companions were very angry with this man. They said after they left, you know that the Prophet ﷺ needed it. He liked it. And this woman made it for him, handmade, because she knew that he needed it. You know, how dare you ask him? And he knew that if you were to ask him, he would not hesitate to say, take it. So why do you do that? The guy said, I did not take it because, or I did not ask for it because I wanted to wear it. So why did he ask for it? He said, I'm going to take it and keep it with me so that it will be my coffin to be enshrouded in it when I die. Why? He said, so when the angels come to ask me, مَا رَبُّكُ وَمَا And what do you say concerning the man who have been sent to you? I will tell them this is his burda. This is clock. You're asking me about him? He gave me his own clothes. 
his garment sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in an attempt to pass that test easily so the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says a person who is a ribat if he died in this condition amina min al riba amina al fattan wa in mata jara alayhi amaluhu alladhi kana ya'mal wa ujri alayhi rizquhu wa amina al fattan and he will be saved from the trial of the grave so brothers and sisters uh, we'll take a short break and inshallah when we return there are a couple of hadith which revolve around the same idea of ribat and its reward and uh, we'll be back inshallah in a couple minutes please stay tuned <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Our phone numbers are area code 002 then 023855132. Alternatively, area code 002 then 01005469323. WhatsApp numbers area code 001347806125. And finally, area code 001361489105. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We've got Sister Fawziya from the UK. Welcome to the program. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Go ahead, Sister Fawziya. I can hear you clearly. Yes, uh, yes. Um, my question is to the woman's prayer. Uh, basically, we all girls do here monthly events at home, remembrance of Allah, and then uh, we decided to pray to God in the same and it's on Friday, so I just want to ask you a question. Now, s s s Sister Fauzi, I can, can you move somewhere else because your sound is interrupted, I cannot hear you clearly. And start over okay. from the beginning, please. Okay, so should I start from beginning? Yes, sounds better now. Go ahead. Okay, so basically, we all sisters do dars at home, remembrance of Allah together once a month. Excellent. And which is on Friday. So my question is, on Friday, can we all pray together at home doing the jamaat and do Friday, Juma prayer at okay. home or not? And my okay. second question is, if it's not Juma prayer, if it's a Zohar prayer, uh, when the as, I, as far as I know, the woman has to stand in between uh, the line, uh, in the middle. And this woman have, uh, I mean, the other um, people who are following um, the woman, Imam, uh, do they do ruku and sajda afterwards or they all follow together? Okay. I don't know if my question clear or not. Yes, no. yes, yes, your question is clear. First of all, no, you cannot uh, offer the Jumu'ah prayer at home. Another men nor women. The Jumu'ah prayer is in Al-Masjid Al-Jami'ah, in the masjid in which you offer the five daily prayers, okay? So in this case, you don't have, uh, actually cannot offer the Jumu'ah at home for you ladies. You wanna go to the masjid, fine, otherwise you're exempt from offering uh, the Friday prayer. So if you pray, you will pray Dhuhr, and you will pray it in Jama'ah, the Imam who's a woman would stand in the middle of the line, not ahead of the line, like the regular Jama'ah. And whenever she makes takbir, like she's going to Ruku'ah, after she makes Ruku'ah, you follow her for Ruku'ah. You do not uh, do the movement equal to her, rather as the regular Jama'ah. After the Imam, who's in your case is a woman, she says Allahu Akbar, then you make Ruku'ah. Then Allahu Akbar, you rise up from Mukru'a and so on. You do not go parallel to her. Thank you, Sister Fawziya from the UK. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Akhi Mu'een from Bangladesh. Assalamu alaikum, ya Mu'een. Welcome, brother. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking, Akhi. Welcome to the program. Go ahead. Uh, okay, brother, I have two questions. Mm -hmm. hey. 
one question is the one by why she wanted to Well, Maureen, I, and unfortunately, I lost you. On behalf of my wife, she said uh, she normally remains quite sick. Like she is okay for one day, and the very next day she is sick. She is suffering from hypertension, high blood pressure, a lot of things. Okay. She is off and on. Like where, when she is fine again, sick. She wants to know some supplications so that uh, she can do it regularly to be good. Like uh, I said, it's a test of Allah, but. Uh, Still, like she has, she's suffering a lot. She says that if there is a supplication that can help her to be like more fit, more good in life. Right. Thank you, brother mine. First of all, may Allah give your wife a quick shifa. Amin. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Ali from Kuwait. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the program, Ali. Go ahead. Question. Yes, please go. Yesterday. Okay. Uh, I want to know that the Umrah that we perform during Hajj is obligatory or or we can dedicate that Umrah for our relatives. Yes, okay. Second question. Uh, we have a very good scholar, Muhammad well, you know, to be honest with you, I heard you're asking about Witter and Aisha, but the question is not clear. The second question isn't really clear, Ali. We have heard from this woman. Uh, that Muhammad Okay, okay. Let me ask you this. So my Ali, my assistant will collect the question from you, inshallah, then they will pass it on to me. Uh Mu'in from Bangladesh. Every person, whenever he feels sick, he can recite some beautiful supplications and ayat upon yourself in order to feel better. Number one, the Prophet ﷺ said, you place your right hand on the spot which is aching or where you feel pain. And you say, let's say that for instance, you've got a migraine, you have a headache, you have pain somewhere. Then you place your hand on it and say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min sharri ma ajidu wa uhadar. Wa Allah, I seek refuge with you against what I complain of and what I'm afraid of. Ma ajidu wa uhadar. You recite that three times. You know, reciting Surah Al-Fatiha, whenever you're having any pain somewhere, and you recite Surah Al-Fatiha, you place your hand on the body part which is aching, and you recite Al-Fatiha, simple. Or you recite Ayat Al-Kursi, simple. And you ask Allah the Almighty for Shifa, that of course helps a great deal. Um, that doesn't mean that you don't have to take medications. Take medications, seek the remedy while putting your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also you, Akhi Mu'in, whenever Mu'in or anyone, if your wife is saying, oh, I'm having toothache, I'm having a headache, I'm having a stomachache, I'm having some pain somewhere, rush, make wudu, perform ablution, then put your right hand on her, on the body part which is suffering, and recite, the supplications and recite As'alullah al-Azim, Rabb al-Arsh al-Azim, an yashfiya ki for a feminine seven times. She will definitely feel much better, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Yaseen from Canada, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sheikh. Welcome to the program, Akhi Yaseen. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, I have a question. I have been married to uh, my ex-wife for only one month, mm -hmm. and she asked for a divorce uh, after having some sort of incident. But um, how? Um, she's asking for the meher for the or for the nikah, 
which is a thousand dollars, but can I use that money for as money that I lent her? Can you use the money to do what? I can't hear you. Yeah. You said, okay, she's asking for divorce and she's asking for the dowry. Can you hear me now? For the, for the nikah. Okay. And, uh, but I already lent her money. For that money that she owes me, I could use that. Uh, can I use that money towards the, the mahar? Okay. For the nikah. Yes, yes. I got the question. Thank you, Yasin, uh, from Canada. Ali, uh, our young viewer from uh, Kuwait, if you're performing Hajj, can you do a Umrah on a side for a relative if this person is dead or if he's permanently unable to travel like disabled? Yes, you can do it, but you do not do it on behalf of a living and a capable person. Okay? Uh, I'm still waiting for my assistant to give me your question about Aisha and Witter and so on. Yahi Yassin from Canada. Um, despite the reason why you guys, uh, uh, because you said X, so you got already divorced, as far as I understood from your question. Despite the fact uh, or the reason that why you got divorced a month after you got married, so the dowry is confirmed, whether it's paid or deferred, once the consummation happened, once the consummation happened. So if you say a thousand dollar, then you owe her the thousand dollar. Well, many people say I will pay you the dowry later, it's deferred. So you owe her that. What happens, Yasin says that I lent her some money. Can I deduct the dowry from this loan? Yes, of course, because the loan that you give her is a money that she owes you. And meanwhile, you owe her a thousand dollar as you just said, so you can deduct it. Because essentially, she is supposed to pay you back what she owes you. And you're supposed to pay her back what you owe her, which is the dowry. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reconcile between all these spouses who are having some trouble. And, uh, um, you know, brothers and sisters, one of the best deeds, which is even superior to fasting and uh, staying up in tahajjud at night is what the Prophet ﷺ calls it islahu that al bayn reconciling the other day I got a call and somebody had already divorced his wife not that he was contemplating and it was over so he contacted me just to arrange how would he see his son in the future so I asked him a question he requested me to intervene I asked him a question whether he would be willing to reconcile, he said, I don't think it will work out. And subhanAllah, when we invited them both, in a matter of three hours, they alhamdulillah reconciled and they shared bed. And I've been receiving very beautiful messages from them. Shaitan, his ultimate goal is to break up the Muslim families. Do not give him this chance. And if you find somebody from your family and from his family or a common friend who can listen to you both and try to reconcile, do not waste this opportunity. Okay, now, the following hadith. Hadith number 1292. Hadith number 1292. An Fudalat ibn Ubaidin radiyallahu anhu. Anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal. كل ميت يختم على عمله إلا المرابط في سبيل الله فإنه ينمى له عمله إلى يوم القيامة ويؤمن فتنة القبر well, This hadith is simply reiterating what was discussed in the last segment of the previous hadith 1291 In the previous hadith it says وإما تجرى عليه عمله الذي كان يعمل وأجري عليه رزقه وأمن الفتان and in this hadith it says فإنه ينمى له عمله إلى يوم القيامة ويؤمن فتنة القبر but there is just a slight difference if we can highlight the word ينمى 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 له عمله إلى يوم القيامة would like to highlight it and 
uh, will show it to the viewers insha'Allah. The word yanmu yani to grow. And nama is the growth. And as zakah in its definition is as yadatu wa nama. As zakah means an increase and growth. In this hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, normally everybody dies, خلاص, all their good deeds will come to end as we discussed in the hadith of Imam Muslim narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. We all know that except from three ways. Except al-murabit, and we've already discussed the meaning of rabat and murabit, the person who is encamping in a military post on the frontier of the Muslim uh, army in order to guard them and so on. So he said, if he's doing this fi sabilillah, if he happen to die, then he's dying for the sake of Allah, he's a martyr. فَإِنَّهُ يُنَمَّ or yunma. Either way, which refers to the increase and the growth. Not only that his deeds and the reward for his deeds will be continuous and perpetual, as we said uh, in, the, um, in the previous hadith, but yunma here, refers it's in the passive yani allah will grow the reward for his good deeds which he used to do whenever he was living even though he's not doing them anymore but he's receiving the full reward and furthermore the reward is being grown for him and he will be given security again is the trial of the grave he will be secure from the fitna of the grave, as we explained in the previous hadith. The following hadith is in the same line, revolves around the same meaning of the virtues of ribat, hadith number 1293. <laughs> من ألف يوم فيما سواه من المنازل. The hadith is collected by Imam Tirmidhi. Uthman ibn Affan, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that I have heard the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, saying, spending a day on the frontier in Allah's way is better than 1,000 days in any other place. Allahu Akbar. The word siwahu min al-manazil refers to any other place. And where does the ribat normally take place? Where does the ribat normally take place? The ribat takes place, um, you know, at the military post on the borders or whenever two armies are you know facing each other so you are at the front line that's called ribat okay so you live in your house you live in the comfort of your home or your neighborhood and you join the military any other place does this include perhaps it's Ramadan and the last 10 nights of Ramadan and Laylatul Qadr so you do i'tikaf in the last 10 nights of Ramadan where in the Haram, in Mecca. Yes, sir. In fact, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy on him, have transferred to us the consensus of the Muslim scholars before and during his time that observing ribat is superior to being anywhere else, including i'tikaf in Mecca or Medina or Jerusalem or Masjid al-Aqsa. Superior reward to being in Mecca or Medina or Masjid al-Aqsa, the farthest mosque in Palestine. There is ijma, general consensus. No one would say, yeah, but this is the Haram, this is Ramadan, this is whatever. And that's why, brothers and sisters, the Sahaba, may Allah be pleased with them, when they understood that from the Prophet وسلم, they traveled all over the earth. Most of the Sahaba, most of the companions of the Prophet وسلم, were, not were not buried in Mecca or Medina. They were buried in Asham, they were buried in Egypt, they were buried 
uh, in other localities. They travel for the sake of Allah. They traveled in order to spread the deen and give da'wah. And whenever there was a threat somewhere and the Muslim army had to travel to this place, they were, those who died, they were buried there. And when they conquered these areas, they stayed there. And uh, many of them were in a charge of teaching others Islam, the new Muslims. So they hung around and they did not die in Mecca. They did not die in Medina. We all know that the Prophet Sallallahu said in the hadith that for those who stay in Medina and die in Medina and be buried, they will be eligible for his intercession. Correct? Whoever can afford to stay and live in Medina and you know, keeps patient while he's experiencing some hardship in Medina, maybe because it's not his place, is maybe because the weather is not convenient for him. So if he dies in Medina, I will intercede for him. But a superior reward to that is to be uh, buried somewhere due to, uh, which is not Medina, which is not Mecca, it's not the Baqia, due to the fact that you are in the ribat with the Muslim army and you died somewhere for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is superior to being buried in Medina superior to being buried in the Baqia among the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is the meaning of Khairun min alfi yawmin, not a single day. One single day you observe a ribat is better than a thousand day you spend anywhere else. You do, you spend a thousand day in Mecca, one day a ribat is better. A thousand day in Medina, one day a ribat is better. All those hadith brothers and sisters show the importance of having some people who are willing to sacrifice their lives to protect their fellow Muslims, to make them feel safe, secure, so that they can worship Allah freely and they can deliver the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with comfort and with security. Inshallah, we end up with that because we ran out of time, but we still have some very interesting hadith with regards to the verses of Ribat particularly we shall continue inshallah next time until then i leave you all in the care and protection of the almighty allah aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to him, he born in humans to be the best and give his best to religion to them. So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about him in paradise, worshipping cows, fire and stones, selling the best with the cheapest price. So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about hell and paradise, worshipping cows, fire and stones, selling their best with the cheapest price.